This is a photo of the page from Tacitus's Annals that contains the passage in question. It's from the earliest known existing manuscript. Here you can see the word Christians, or as it is written here, Christianos. You can read the letters easily enough, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-O-S. The S's look a little bit like F's. But wait a minute. All is not as it seems here. There is an odd space between the I and the S. Is it possible that there was a larger letter there where the I now sits? Maybe the letter E? This is an ultraviolet scan of that same image taken in 2008. The ultraviolet scan proves that the original letter was actually the letter E. This means that the original word in this 11th century manuscript was Crestianos, meaning the useful ones or the good ones. Crestus in Greek means something akin to useful or good. Crestianos would mean the good ones. This opens up some interesting lines of thought. Was there a sect of Jews known as the good ones? This isn't the only place the name Crestus or the term Crestianos was used. It's an interesting thing to consider. When was the term Christian first used? Let's follow this idea by examining the places in the New Testament where the term Christian is used. The term Christian appears only three times in the New Testament. Acts 11.26, Acts 26.28, and 1 Peter 4.16. Since Acts and 1 Peter are early 2nd century documents, you'd naturally assume that the term Christian was in use very early on. But you know what happens when you assume, right? <laughs> Once again, let's look at the earliest complete Bible in existence, our good friend Codex Sinaiticus from the fourth century. The original, uncorrected version in Codex Sinaiticus in all three of the passages we just looked at reads, Christianos. Now let's have a look at Acts 11.26 in Codex Sinaiticus. You'll notice the word in question inside the orange box, which I expanded out near the bottom. You can see the word Christian in there, but it's Christianos, and it may look like a lot of strange letters, but let's walk through that for a second. It's not really an X, it's the Greek letter Ki, C-H basically, which is going to give us the K sound. The next letter is not a P, but it's the letter Rho. It's actually an R. So the CHR. Then you see the H, which is not an H. It's actually the Greek letter Eta, which is basically like Epsilon. It's another form of E. And you can see clearly that the scribe has tried to scrub out that part of the Eta to leave just the Eota, or what we consider the letter I. The next letter is not really a C, it's actually a lunate sigma. In other words, it looks like a crescent moon, and it's a simplified version of the Greek letter sigma. They began doing that sometime a few hundred years before the turn of the new millennia. So next we have T, or in the Greek, tau. Then we have I, or in the Greek, iota. Then we have Alpha, which is our letter A, and Nu, or our letter N. Now, the next two letters are not OS like you would think. Uh, it's Omicron, Upsilon. Sounds kind of funny. And they changed the S to the basically our Y uh, because of grammar rules that we don't have to get into at this point. So we have the word Crestianos instead of Christianos. And in each of these three instances, the eta, or what's our letter H, has been scrubbed out to leave an iota, to make Christianos, 
Christianos. Now here is Acts 26.28 in Codex Sinaiticus, and you can see in the upper right that the H, or the Greek Eta, has been scratched out to create Iota. And a quick look at 1 Peter 4.15 will give us the same result. You can see clearly that the Eta has been scrubbed out to create an Iota, magically turning Christian into Christian. And here's another document that seemed to evade the correction process of the Christian scribes. This extremely late 17th century manuscript of Josephus' Testimonium Flavianum actually shows Christians with an E instead of Christians. All three instances of Christian in the New Testament were originally Christian with an E, and later scribes altered it in the Sinaiticus Codex as well as most all other manuscripts in order to bring their history into harmony. But they didn't catch all the manuscripts, and how could they? There are thousands of them. Minuscule 81 shows that this term was being copied as late as the year 1044 and was never corrected. Scribes in the Middle Ages corrected the Tacitus manuscript by writing over the E, making it into an I. Scribes altering ancient manuscripts in order to harmonize their fictional histories? <clears throat> ah, it couldn't happen. And the plot thickens. As Kenneth Humphreys states on his website, JesusNeverExisted.com, the truth may be that there was an original Gnostic cult following a personified virtue, Jesus Christos, Jesus the Good. Consequently, they were called Christians, an appellation which seems to have attached itself at an early date to the sectarians of the heretic Martian. Support for this possibility comes from the earliest known Christian inscription found in the 19th century on a Martianite church at Deir Ali, three miles south of Damascus. Dated to around 318 CE, the inscription reads, The Meeting House of the Martianists in the village of Lebaba, of the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Good. And the actual Greek word in the inscription is krestos, not Christos. <laughs> 